All right, squad. So I have Jarrell Lindsay in the house. Man, it's, it's what's going on, bro? It's it's so crazy to see you in person. Um, like 2017, man. I was working at a, a gym behind a desk, and I was just reading your um, your article on isometrics. And now, you know, six years later, man, we're talking together. <laughs> and uh, so, to me, it was. Um, so, so the squad knows it was uh, a combination of, of three, um, essentially influencers. It was um, uh, the Bioneer, uh, whose YouTube channel has exploded since I first saw it on Bruce Lee Isometrics. It was Jarrell Lindsay's article on Isometrics and um, the eight exercises that Bruce Lee made. And then it was a YouTuber by the name of Machismo whose channel is all about the bull worker. And it was just, I would just gobble up their stuff all the time. So it's so crazy to have you here, man. Um, so before we get started, I highly recommend that we all take a look at Jarrell's content. It's on breakingmuscle.com, his article, and there's tons of other um, pieces of content that he has. I'm gonna drop links to in the description box, but um, great to have you here, man. How you feeling? feeling great man it's been a long time coming and i uh i appreciate all uh, the the love and support you know i uh i also uh, follow the by near the uh, machismo's content so you know i've uh i've been studying isometric exercise for a long time actually since my junior year in high school is when i first uh started studying it when i was in uh in wrestling in high school because weight class is very important and I wanted to ensure that I had a method to strengthen myself without putting on too much muscle because of uh, because then I'm changing weight classes. Um, mm. And in my search, isometrics is what I came across. I first came across the name Alexander Zass and was like, what's this guy about? Like, let me check out his story. And that led me down this whole rabbit hole yeah. to, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> what you see now. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's so funny. It's like, it usually starts with like, it's either Zass or Bruce Lee. And then it's just like, mm. what is going on here? This is not at all like what we learned anywhere yeah. else. <laughs> exactly. And that was, that was the thing as well, because I've been a lifelong Bruce Lee fan, but I had never really uh, heard about the association between Bruce Lee and isometrics until I started doing the research and seeing that that was really a linchpin of a lot of his training. You know, there's he he's he incorporated it a lot. He even did a uh, eight hour long isometric uh, workout one time, which I wouldn't personally recommend. Oh but like, God. you know, that's <laughs> it's a little bit overkill in my opinion. But <laughs> it just showed the the effects that he had that that warm marble like sinewy sinewy strength at a very small size. And Alexander's ass as well, about 176 pounds carrying horses and bending steel and you know you see it throughout history the the only undefeated wrestler in over 5,000 matches from the time that he was 10 years old to the time he was 50 the great gamma he always trained isometrics he was one of the things that he said to uh the mighty adam who was a strong man in coney island in america in the 50s uh he said that he would tie a belt around a tree and he would pull against the tree every day trying to throw the tree to the ground, wrestling against that tree, pulling with the belt. And the mighty Adam asked him, well, did you ever tear down the tree? And the great gamma said, no, but after a tree, a man is easy. <laughs> you know, so. Love it. <laughs> that is so hype. It's so hard not to get hype here in that stuff. It's like, it's like yeah, the stuff right? from legend. <laughs> it's like real life superheroes. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, bro. T uh, tell us about yourself. You know, how long have you been training um, in general? You know, whether isometrics involved or not, and um, you know, uh, essentially, um, what you what are your thoughts on isometrics as a whole? Um, do you use them regularly? Okay, so as far as uh, training overall, what I would say my regimen uh, focuses on the core of my workouts uh, for over a decade at this point have been isometrics um my 
overall focus is not just uh, isometric strength, but it's in muscle control. The thing that I like to employ in my training is not necessarily just uh, gaining muscle, gaining strength, gaining endurance. You know, those are all cores of a uh, fitness program. Um, but I am very big on being able to control the muscle that I have. I, uh, as, as a student of many uh, vaudeville strongmen and physical cultures of old, one of my favorite personal strongmen is a strongman whose name was Maxic. Maxic. Uh, Max. Oh yeah, five foot four, um, about 145 pounds, and he was born sickly, ironically enough. Um, but he would do muscle control exercises in his bed in order to improve his strength, mm. and uh, just doing those exercises in his bed daily um, got him so that he wasn't bedridden anymore. And then the more that he endeavored in controlling the muscle that he had and controlling the strength that he had, he found an inner strength that allowed him to do feats that surpassed those of men who were twice his size. You know, he, he Trump Van de Gellen was about 215 pounds and Maxic was able to press Trump Van de Gellen overhead on one arm 15 times while holding a pitcher of beer without dropping a drop, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. The things you hear of legend, but like that's when I hear things like that, it interests me because I love the idea of muscle control. I love seeing um videos of like uh for instance Otto arco uh he was another physical cultures of the area who was who was big on muscle control or seeing modern yogis because a lot of the uh core of what they got in their programs was from yogic traditions and just learning how to use 100 percent of the muscle that you have in a sort of like anime like rock lee sort of sense <laughs> but uh yeah just uh and uh, but that all really started with isometrics and i i do some form of isometric exercise every day um I, it may not be to the same intensity you know but um i i always try to keep up something with isometric exercises um i i am an apprentice old-time strongman so one of the things that i like to do or practice is steel bending oh and wow. uh, isometric exercise is uh very important for doing that obviously having your grip strength have uh, it's uh sh mentality strength and technique are three things that are very core one the mentality understanding that it's going to hurt it doesn't matter how much strength you get as a strong man it's going to hurt and you have to know that when you get to that point that you're pushing the steel and it hurts and you stop or you just try to reel back a little bit, that's usually the point where the steel is ready to bend. But if you allow yourself to stop, then you've defeated yourself. Interesting. Um, but having the technique, using the proper technique, because a lot of people have the strength to do so, but they don't have the technique or they stop pushing when it gets to that point. But most certainly having the strength, having that muscular strength, but having that ligament strength as well to push through um that's very based in isometrics i mean it's literally like the idea of immovable object versus unstoppable force and one of them's gotta bend you know one of them's gotta give exactly again referencing the mighty adam who was speaking with the great gamma he was a strong man who i read his book the uh, the spiritual journey of joseph greenstein which is his real name and he has a mantra in the book that he would always use to set up his mentality when he was preparing to bend a, a piece of steel. And it didn't matter if he was in front of no one or if he was in front of a room full of people or if, if he was in Madison Square Garden like he was in his later years. Um, he always had this mantra that is, I am man, I am possessed of the power. You are metal without will. My will is superior to you. My power will overcome you you will bend, you will break. That mentality is in, for me, the core of isometric training. So that's what I, that's what I'd love to work with, you know? Man, you're making me want to go on Isomax right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, man, I love it. Also, speaking of the isometrics, for anyone who hasn't gotten on to that yet, that is that is a fantastic piece of training equipment. I have an isomax and an iso chain, and, you know, one of the uh, missing uh, uh, cores of isometric training for a lot of people is the uh, uh, being able to measure your progress uh, progressively, with, like numerically, being able to record it, you know, saying having weight set, having dumbbells, you can see the progressive resistance, but it's a little bit harder if you're doing body weight isometrics or if you're pushing against steel or a wall or something immovable. The isomax and the iso chain giving that mechanical resistance, giving that tension and giving that progression, allowing you to see the numbers, allowing you to see the force for how long, the, the average, it, it's, it's a fantastic training program. Uh, training piece of equipment so i would recommend it to anyone that's so awesome hey guys you you heard it here you heard it here <laughs> <laughs> oh my 100%. god dude that is so cool man oh my goodness uh i really want to ask you this next question because i feel like you know a, a lot of the squad members see me um but real in all reality, isometrics are still relatively new to me in the grand scheme of things. Um, so January 1st, um, I've been lifting for 15 years um, and isometrics have only come into the picture in 2020 where I even started to take it seriously because when I was running into um, your guys' content, I was only messing around with it. Like I dabbled on the power rack and um, I didn't even build an OG ISO chain until 2020. Um, when all that supply chain stuff was getting my Dragon Door ISO chain held up, I was like, ah, I'll just make it myself, you know. But um, right. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So like, what um, what benefits have you really seen or like felt in your body? And I, I think that you'll really understand more of this question because um, a lot of the fitness world is all about the show muscles and you know, but um. As we both know, that's that's it's not always about that. So, um, what what have you found in in that regard for yourself? Right, right. So, uh, that's an interesting question. There's um, my favorite thing about isometric training is that uh, people, because it's very, relatively new. And it's relatively, uh, it, it's not very commonly used in commercial gyms or whatever, then it's very misunderstood. Isometric exercise can be used in a variety of ways for a variety of goals. You can use isometric training in order to uh, improve your strength. You know, uh, you, you can use it to also improve uh, hypertrophy. You know, you can use it for myofibrillar hypertrophy. You can use it for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, just knowing how to use it. You can use isometric exercise for weight loss as well. Um, and the my favorite thing is uh, for rehabilitation and or inj injury prevention. Um, because so trying to encompass all of those things together for one um, in regards to the strength as we've referenced Bruce Lee and Alexander's ass and whatever the, the smaller guys who were able to do incredible strength feats those speak for themselves but in the same token um, so the person that I learned uh, isometrics from initially is a man um, named Batman O'Brien his literal name is Batman um, he is an he is an isometric trainer in, in um, Ireland in Dublin he is also a uh, swordsman he is a traditional Chinese medical doctor um, he's trained in Western clinical medicine. Like he, 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 he pretty much does it all. Um, and he taught me, uh, very different styles of isometrics. There's a way that you, it, it, it really comes down to what you're trying to accomplish because for instance, if you're looking for strength, you want to, you know, focus on that maximal intensity you want to focus on in the same way that if you're weightlifting, you would want to focus on like heavy triples or that one to three rep range. Same thing with isometric training. You would want to put 70 to 100% effort 
into your isometric training, just making sure that you have uh, a time of uh, time under tension of about seven to 12 seconds. Now, if you're looking for hypertrophy, you would want to expand your time under tension to about 90 seconds, but you're still not just focusing on full intensity balls to the wall, overcoming isometrics, you would want to lower the intensity a little bit, but so that it would give you a positive failure to 90 seconds. And then you would want it to uh, include multiple muscle groups because the more muscle groups that you include, then the more that th that affects your nervous system to release the human growth hormone in order to help you to rebuild and then making sure that you eat, of course, and things like that. Um, if you're looking for isometrics for weight loss, you, you, you can lower the intensity even more and then you would you would increase the time a little bit to about 120 seconds but you would do it in a way that would it, that would basically put your body in a state of just like constant fuel burning um doing that style of isometric training you know what i'm saying that and um there's there's just it's there's many ways to skin a cat and so i, I in my personal life as well not even just in anecdotes like i I myself train in isometrics, and I know that you spoke with me with my brother Lewis as well. He is much than I am. He's about 290 pounds, but he's gained a lot of his strength and muscle from isometric training. But in the same token, with the amount of time that I was training before him, then I can still contend with him if we're like wrestling or arm wrestling or things like that, wow. simply with my strength and that may not be seen through my size you know i'm i'm yeah. i am six feet tall but like my weight is about 163 pounds soaking wet but i am able to produce higher levels of strength than i'm my my physicality might say because of my isometric training you know anime strength man <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly that's crazy so essentially he is about one and a half times your weight and you're still able to contend with him because of your training Absolutely. and if you look on my uh on my youtube channel you'll see videos as well where i'm doing it. for instance there's a video of me where i'm wearing a uh weighted uh vest of about 40 pounds and then i'm doing a wrestler's bridge while my brother who at the time was 285 then as well was sitting on my chest and I can hold that for time. You know, I, I was able to do weighted push-ups on my thumbs, you know, uh, feats that as a kid, I never would have even imagined. Like as a, one thing that I haven't sp uh, spoken up much on in my channel, a reason that I found affinity with Maxic is because I was also a very sickly kid. I was uh, prematurely born. Um, when I was born, I, uh, my heart stopped beating whenever I fell asleep. Wow. And they had monitors that they put on my chest in order to monitor my heartbeat. And they like they had to yank the monitors off and try to restart my heart. And then I still have circle scars on my chest from that time. Um, I had asthma, so I you know wasn't very athletic in a lot of my endeavors, and I wasn't able to have that much endurance. Um, and I it, it took me a long time for me to hit puberty as well. So I was always very small, even in middle school and up to ninth grade. I was literally up to ninth grade. I was under 100 pounds. And then like 10th grade is when I started to hit my growth spurt. So I was never really like the oh, kid you that too. you saw. <laughs> Mine was 10th I was, grade I was never really the kid that you saw on the on the basketball court or on the football field. And you were like, yeah, I want to pick him first, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, but that's why I really love uh, the, the isometric training that I've done is because it it didn't like ter fully change my physique in a way that I blew up because that wasn't my personal goal. And if that was my goal, then like I could have taken those steps as well. But it allowed me to take the size that I had, hone that size, and it allowed me a level of athleticism that I never would have expected in my life otherwise. Um, and it's, really uh it's it, it it's changed everything about me you know that is so sick that is so sick to hear that just <laughs> from 
from day one all the way up till now. So it's cool to hear your origin story. And I feel like I might know the answer to this next question, but I'm still interested in, in hearing it for sure. Um, how do you stay motivated to continually do isometric training? Um, for one, just the, uh, the, the results that I've seen from the training for, uh, for myself, for others around me. Um, that's when I was speaking before and I was speaking on a lot of the benefits of strength or hypertrophy or weight loss. The reason that I said that injury prevention or recovery is my favorite. That was the one thing that was my biggest motivation in isometric training. Um, a man named uh, Bud Jeffries, rest in peace. He was a very powerful, strong man, uh, modern era. And uh, I got to meet with him as well and train in some old time strongman feats. But he was uh, one of the first men in the world to uh, bottom squat 1,000 pounds, like ass to grass. Um, and like, yeah, just it, ridiculous levels of strength and ridiculous levels of endurance as well, because you could see him hitting the heavy bag. He could go on like 20 rounds of just hitting the heavy bag and then go do a workout. Like he was just a phenomenal athlete. And I, I feel like it was in his genes as well, because if anyone, if we have any boxing aficionados, he was a descendant of Jim Jeffries, um, who was a heavyweight champion. But Bud Jeffries is a very powerful man. And, you know, that, that level of strength, he still, he was on a run one day and he injured his knee while running. And that like, with his weight, with, you know his size at the time um it, it, it was basically just like yeah you, you're gonna have some trouble walking again um probably gonna have some type of limp for the rest of your life and bud decided that that wasn't going to be the case and the solution that he found in doing so was isometric training and using isometric training on that leg that he injured throughout a course of months to over about a, about the course of a year, he was able to not only regain the strength that he had in his knee and his to his ligaments post injury, but he also found uh, other benefits that, like number one, he, he realized that he he was able to lose a lot of weight that he didn't even he wasn't even paying attention to that factor um, in doing the isometric training, and he was honing and sharpening his physique, and you know he was. Uh, he was able to, he was going back to doing like 700 pound zercher squats and things like that, that you would not think that if you had a knee injury like he had, you would be able to go back to doing, you know? So uh, seeing things like that uh, was just highly motivating for me. But m honestly, most importantly, uh, in a sense of realism, I'm not always motivated to do so. I'm not always having the motivation to get up and be like, oh, well, yeah, like, well, oh, let's go. It's time to do isometric. Sometimes you have a very long day and you have emotional issues or work issues or family issues, et cetera, et cetera. But at, at this point, I've built up the discipline to continue to do so, regardless of what I know that, regardless of what I want to do, because sometimes I really do just like, oh, I just want to lay down. and. And if I do really feel the need that the rest is that important, I will take that time to rest. But I also know sometimes that it's important to be able to notice the difference and notice when you're just being like, okay, actually I, I'm, I'm trying to distract myself and distance myself from things or disassociate or whatever, what I really need to do to center myself is do this isometric training. And I'm trying to avoid doing it because of all these things that are going on, but doing it will help me to focus on all these things that are going on, you know? So having that discipline, just con that consistency is what makes the most difference. I knew that was gonna be your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Squad, that was, that was the most realist answer you could expect from a veteran i mean it is just we all have those days but you know it's it's yeah. having the having the uh, consistency and discipline to know when it's really all right we're dealing with this family stuff versus man i don't really feel like it but you know let's just 
Mm-hmm. And everyone goes through that. And I, I'm I'm so yeah. glad you said you. <laughs> so, <weird. laughs> so I, I have them days too, man. It's just like, yeah, man. <laughs> we all do. We all do. do. We all do. Um, so I know we had uh, mentioned it before, um, but I really, and I, I can't wait to ask. Um, you know if if all things go well, I want to ask Bioneer and Machismo too eventually. Um, but I would like to know because we all appreciate isometrics, and it definitely not hurting my feelings for, for whatever you know answer you give. I know all this build up, right? Um, but what what do you truly think of the ISO chain and ISO Max and um, squad and and non subscribers? Um, I am affiliated with Dragon Door and the ISO chain, but I, I always like to say this: you might not have known, but one of the main reasons that Only Limit Squad channel exists is because I got excited about the product, but I wanted to prove them wrong. And if it, the product was a piece of crap, I was going to put them on blast. You probably didn't know that. You probably didn't know that, but you do now. So, <laughs> But uh, I, I would truly like to know what, what your thoughts are. If the pros, cons, and if there's cons truly, I, I'm interested. <laughs> no, I truly do. Um... So... With my isometric training, like I said, my, my a lot of my focus is on muscle control. So primarily what I like to do with my isometric training is body weight isometrics because that, that helps me to have my own personal feedback and my mind muscle connection and be able to focus in that training. Um, and I was also very much like, the, the, I'm not the most affluent fitness trainer in the world. So there is a lot of time where I wasn't able to afford the equipment or, you know, able to get access to go to a gym in order to do something like that. So it was very important for me to be able to have a training program that was something that I could do no matter where I was, no matter what I was doing. And isometrics, that's another thing that I love is that when you understand isometrics and you understand that true nature of the isometric training and muscle control, it's something that you can do no matter where you are and still get an incredible workout from it. So with that being said, um, initially I was a little bit snarky about the idea of using ISO chain or using ISO max because I'm like, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need to prove that I need to use equipment in order to show the benefit of isometrics or anything like that. But you know, uh, I, Coach Paul Wade sent me the Ultimate Isometrics Manual, oh. and I read through it. Uh, sent it to me because I, I, I he quoted one of my Breaking Muscle articles in the book as well. Um, yep, I remember and, that. Yeah, uh, and reading through it, seeing how comprehensive the research was, seeing how much work he had put into the book itself, that's what made me say, okay let me try it out let me try it out and see (laughs) and honestly like i said before man i i really do love it i love using the equipment i love uh trying new movements and different things with the equipment i love the the mechanical feedback that i get from using it i love the progressive resistance of the iso chain um there uh if there's any stipulations that i might have with it sometimes it wouldn't be about the training equipment itself it would be so like the 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 bar uh device depending on i guess i don't know if it's because you pull hard or if it's just like the battery falls out or something like that but like sometimes there's a little like technical difficulties with Uh with the bar itself um but those bars are easily replaceable and um you know that that's a quite an easy fix and it's not even a regular problem it's not like i have to replace a bar every week i've, I've had the isomax for or i had my iso chain for about a year and a half now and i had to replace the bar one time um so yeah man honestly like i i use the iso chain mostly and then my brother uses his iso max at home and he's he's constantly posting videos on what he's doing with it and finding a new way he'll message me sometimes and be like yeah man i tried this new neck exercise and i got 390 but like oh my god i can't do this for another three days this hurts but like it hurts good (laughs) you know it's it's he's he's always excited to like use it and seeing him have that type of excitement about it 
uh, motivates me as well. But like, I, I love using it too. It's, 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 I would recommend it to anyone, honestly. Honest, real opinion. And that's from somebody who doesn't even like training equipment. So. <laughs> That's so sick. Oh my god, man. It's so uh this is like so surreal. Like it's just it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Um okay, great. And uh I, I would just like to um I would like to add my two cents uh for that. And I, I love Jarrell that you you um really gave that that review from the heart. Um and um, I say that because, you know, and, and some, some of the OG squad members know this uh, about me, but um, when I saw that, and I, I was always interested in that, I know you mentioned Rock Lee earlier, I was always interested in like that anime type thing, I, I just didn't really know how to do it, and so I just, you know, did weightlifting for all these years, I, I'm definitely not like in a position where I'm like, man, I regret doing it, you know, I, I, I like the size that I've built, um, but I I want that extra. I want that power. I don't want it to just be fluff also. I want it to have the meaning behind it, you know? Um, and, you know, doing these uh, these isometric exercises on the ISO chain and ISO max and really seeing uh, Bruce Lee uh, doing it and then the, uh, the old photos and such, um, it's a hell of a motivator. It really is. Yeah. Um, and, and you had mentioned your brother's excitement. It really does... It really does make a difference you know sometimes i'm uh responding to comments um on the channel and you know i'll i'll get a comment like dude you know i i i take martial arts and my wrestling i, I just got this one recently my wrestling has improved a lot um since purchasing the mm -hmm. isomax and you know like guys these things are not cheap i mean it's not um a three thousand piece a three thousand dollar piece of equipment like i have a uh abdominal exercise from life fitness upstairs that's to mm -hmm. me that's expensive um but i you know it's you know it is what it is but um i think that bang for buck this is incredibly difficult to beat for what it provides you um it's not the I ultimate think, thing but it's like I dollar for dollar value it, it totally for pays for it. interested in who is interested in fitness, anyone who is interested in improving their strength, their physique, um, from small size to large size, you know, it, it just, anyone can gain a new level of strength from an isometric training regimen and getting something like the isomax, the iso chain, those are, it, 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 honestly, it pays for itself. It's like having a home gym. You know, it's it really is. It's like there's there's so much versatility with it. You can do squat training, you can do deadlifts, you can do presses, you can do curls. You can, you know, there's so much variety that you can do with the program, and with the with the equipment, and it's very durable, and it it the benefits, you know, they really do speak for themselves. So like, yeah, it pays for itself. I would recommend it to anyone. I've already recommended it to so many people. So like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just see like um, some of my clients I have in the gym, uh, I'll get um, random members will be like, what's that thing that you have your your clients use? And I was like, here, come try this. And they're like, oh mm -hmm. my God, this hurts. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, right, the fitness right. world is big. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess... Oh, oh, that 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 goes into another question. This, this is kind of a fun one. Um, have okay. you ever gotten where, wherever you did these? Have you ever gotten like weird looks doing isometrics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you asked that question. So, I have a story relating to that actually. Um, so when I uh, this this was about. 2014 i believe i went to a friend uh, to a gym with my friend and you know i started out with uh just like calisthenic workout and they had immediately gone over to the weights so i was doing pull-ups and i was doing push-ups and things like that and you know in the gym there's the guy who stands at the desk and just was sort of watching over everyone but like he was uh one of the kinesiology students in the school. So, you know, he's he, he got, a, got a solid knowledge base. And one of the things that I went to do 
was the wrestler's bridge which was this was after I'd, I had already done the video where I was wearing a weighted vest and had my brother sitting on top of me or whatever. But like that, that didn't happen in this instance, but um, I had spent extensive time reading about Wrestler's Bridge and how it had helped so many different wrestlers, Mike Tyson and how it helped Dan Gable and how it, you know, it was a staple of a lot of these people's training. So I was like, okay, well, this is something that can help strengthen my neck. Let me try it out. So I start doing the Wrestler's Bridge but um, the way that I like to train my neck, I can do it with, uh, I can do it front facing where my forehead is to the ground and nothing is touching, or I can do it reverse where my neck is, where my head is on the ground and nothing is touching. Okay. Um, so when I was doing it reverse the first time, guy, the desk is just already looking over like, <laughs> what, what is going on? And then when, I did it the front way. He got up and he was just like, "Hey, uh, I don't think you should be doing that." And I was like, "Well, I, I, I get you, but like, I, I know what I'm doing. Of like, I, I train myself. Like, I've been doing this for a long time. Like, I know what I'm doing." And he's trying to tell me everything that he read in his textbook about <laughs> why I shouldn't be doing this or whatever. And uh, it reminds me of a, uh, I, I had a conversation with uh, a man got uh, Aspernaut online. Sometimes you'll see some of his videos, uh, A-S-P-E-R-N-A-U-T. Um, okay. he's, 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 he's he, uh, just natural body trainer. And what he likes to say was, uh, there are people who study the phen And that that resonated with me because like yeah there are people who study the phenomenon there are people who become it there are people who can like see what's going on in the text and read the sentences and whatever but like unless you're actually trying to go out and apply people who were reading or like studying wrestling back then who couldn't necessarily do what the great gamble was doing you know what i'm saying because he was the phenomenon and like that's I feel like isometric training is that like phenomenon factor, but like it's not something that's common and it's not something that people understand. So like when they're seeing it, you they see you like uh, doing those and you're like pushing and pulling a tree for dear life or something like that. Or like even with the, with the equipment that I have, when people are watching me doing the equipment and like pulling on it or squatting or whatever they're like so what does that do yeah <laughs> it's like you you you, you sort of get that weird reaction but like at this point i i kind of i kind of enjoy it because it allows me to open up my world to other people yeah you know yeah so but yeah. yeah looks and the questions and all that <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny i um uh, I just finished a uh, a video on uh, power rack isometrics, and I'm I'm gonna have a couple follow up ones in depth on how to perform that. Um, but for anyone that has seen these already, squad, if you've ever if if you saw that video, there were a couple guys that were on the power rack next to me, and when I stopped recording, like I could see the reflection through the mirror, and they were looking at me like I had two heads, like they were like, like yo, why is he not putting weights on his bar? <laughs> I'm just like, mm -hmm. all right, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it's odd. But uh, well, you know was, what? That was that part of the motivation of the. Uh, that was that was part of the motivation of this the steel bending as well because when people ask questions and they're like, "What's going on?" or "What does that do?" and they're like, well, well, how does what does that help?" and I'm like, "Oh, I can do this." Yeah, and they're just like, "Oh, oh, okay, I get it now." <laughs> <laughs> oh there it is that that makes sense <laughs> they just need okay. to see it applied they just need to, it it has exactly. to be the wow factor um mm -hmm. yeah, but uh yeah. and and i kind of like um i find myself being attracted to unique things um and i like that um isometrics are um a little odd um, but the payoff is mm -hmm. insane. It's kind of like um, there's your appreciation yeah. for calisthenics. And um, you can always tell when, like, an advanced calisthenic guy walks into the gym room. 
and he starts doing like planches and like you know one arm pull ups and you know handstands in in the middle of the in, of the the room. And it's just like, and it's not like I don't look at him as like, all right, dude, stop flexing. It's just like, dude, you put years of effort into that, and it's just a different appre- yeah. appreciation. You know, it's like. When you see somebody, you know, bench 405 or squat five, and it's just like, it's a, it's an appreciation. They This is years upon yeah. years upon years of focusing on that specific tree. If, if, for any gamers in here, you know, they, they specced into that it's, tree. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, exactly. It's like a stat tree. It's, it's witnessing strength as an art because what it's to say is not that, you know, not to say that I... Or calisthenics is more superior than any style of training or weightlifting is more superior you do what you like you do the things that make you feel good and if the things that are making you feel good in fitness are helping you to reach your goals then do those things if calisthenics of doing the planches and one-arm pull-ups and those things if that's what's making you feel good about yourself and your training and you're reaching your results consistently and having fun with your training keep doing that if you're a weirdo like me and you like old time strongman stuff and you like bending steel or ripping phone books or stuff like that like yeah of course it's gonna it's but if you're enjoying it you're enjoying the results you're enjoying the process it's an art it is a science of course and there's a lot of science behind it but it is an art there are so many sects of fitness that you can apply yourself to in martial arts in swimming and boxing and you know there's so many ways that you can take strength and apply it it's as bruce lee would say the art of expressing the human body yeah so the way that you express your human body if you have fun with it then that's all that matters reach your goals and then field people's questions you know that's it that's it, man. Um, I get uh, the last question. Um, well, I, I guess it's a two-parter that have nothing to do with each other. But um, <laughs> one, uh, <laughs> uh, how did you run into um, the No Limit Squad channel? And tell us about Ren training with your um, the link that you sent. Okay, so with uh, No Limit, I initially. Um, Actually, I, I I saw your name uh, in the uh, Vim and Vigor and Isometrics uh, and more Facebook group um, where you were posting, you know, your progress and things like that. And um, when I came across No Limit Squad on YouTube, I didn't initially make the connection because as an isometrics enthusiast, I like to keep myself updated and not just say that like, oh, I've learned the things I need to learn. So like, it's just my knowledge and I just pass that on to other people. Research is always improving. The art is always changing. So I like to hear other people's perspectives. I like to hear, you know, different information. Um, So I was just searching things on YouTube and uh, I came across one of your videos actually. um, And I started just digging more into your channel and it was funny because I, I I always enjoy your content the way that you speak to your viewers the way you speak to your squad and the way that you present your information about asymmetrics you always include you know uh, personal anecdotes or stories with research um, you know actual scientific methods and things like that of what you're trying to present in your training so uh that interested me a lot and you know just reading more about it and then hearing that uh you know my brother was looking through your videos as well and then he was like oh well, like i know you were saying you were watching chris's videos he said something about how he was like looking at your research and i was just like oh really that's interesting like let, let me reach out to him and see if i could talk to him and uh it's 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 kind of cool to see that come full circle because like i always even though now a lot of people have like people from dragon door and you know people across the world have have messaged me and talked to me about like oh like the articles that you wrote or like when you had your website back in the day or your youtube channels or things like that they motivated me to look at this or inspire this it's it's always humbling because i still see myself as that little bright-eyed high schooler who is just like oh this is like really cool training like i just want to learn more about it so like 
any time that I can share that passion with anybody else, it's always intriguing to me, and it's it sparks something because it's just like it's it makes me giddy. I'm I'm a, I'm a little nerd. I'm I'm still the little kid who's just like wanting to do a kamehameha, yeah. so like seeing stuff like that always, you know, <laughs> it's motivating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, Ren training, that is something that I've been working on um, for. probably since about probably since about 2017 actually um which again uh expressing my nerd side originally came from uh hunter x hunter oh my where, god uh, okay all right <laughs> <laughs> uh, where gon and kalua are trying to maximize the amount of time that they can hold mm. their the, the full power of their attention which is ren and uh, I like to see, uh, I, th there are a lot of ways that I like to try and connect reality with fiction and see where they overlap, see sure. where somebody is putting something down and seeing like, okay, well that's clearly just like hyperbole or seeing if there's like a connection to, you know, the real stories. And, and that always interested me because again, like even seeing comics back in the day dc comics where you would see like superman as the man of steel he could bend steel across his chest but then you would see like alexander's ass who would do <laughs> steel across his chest and then he would expand it and break it you know i like to see where they overlap sure. so um studying that there was a uh the connection that i saw with the hunter x hunter ren training was there's something called the kivlov isometry which is an exercise that's essentially used um to help to calm yourself down basically bring your heart rate down and it's it's, it's like a full body isometric exercise produced by a man named dr keep love um where you would say do exactly that you would tense every muscle in your body you would start to feel from your toes and you would tense your toes and you would start to feel in your calves and feel your legs all the way up and you would tense it for a period of time and then you would relax and then you would do that three times and you know that's something that would that would help to improve blood flow it would help to improve, improve like the mental fog and stuff like that so this was back in the days where i was uh being very very experimental with my training so i was like okay well i'm going to try to do a key law isometric for 60 seconds or I would try to do it for 120 seconds. Now I'm trying to do it for five minutes and like just, just trying to see how long I can just like stand there and improve my tension and hold that like as maximal level of tension as I could. And in doing that, I did found, find that I actually did build muscle. I built strength from doing that, but the energy expenditure, the payoff, just like it, it, it didn't seem like it was something that I could that I felt comfortable telling to other people or introducing to a client or something like that right. that was more something right. like me being the mad scientist in my room mixing up concoction like yeah I would do that for myself but like I can't tell that to other people sure but like there still had to be some way that I could translate that concept to other people in my mind and what I found in doing so, what I really thought of was I was looking at old time strongman lifts. And there is one very powerful, but nowadays uh, forgotten lift, and that's the bent press. And the bent press is a lift in which the strongman sets the barbell on its end, will take it, and then put the weight overhead, go all the way down, and then come up and press it straight up with his arm. And the thing about that lift is that it was a multi-planar lift. It's a lift that includes all three planes of motion. And then you have to have that stability, you have to have the breath work when you're doing it. But the thing that was important was the full body tension, the attentiveness that you had to pay to your entire body because you're using an incredible amount of tension or an incredible amount of weight 
but you're doing it three dimensionally. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it unilaterally where you're doing a curl or you're not doing it bilaterally, just doing push ups or bench press or squat. You're, you're including all three, you're including the frontal plane, the sagittal, and the transverse plane. So, what I thought about with Ren training was applying that full body tension mindset, but three dimensionally. How can you take isometric exercise? and translate it into a multi-planar setting? How can you take something that's just like, you know, uh, because the one thing that I love about asymmetric training is because it's an exercise in stillness, you can apply high levels of tension, you can apply maximal force with an incredibly reduced risk of injury because you're not trying to do movement or you're not, you know, uh, applying strength at an end range of motion where your connective tissues might be weaker and the weight, like momentum, come kicks in or anything like that you can apply as much force as you are voluntarily capable of contracting being able to do that is a is an absolute linchpin of isometric training and being able to apply that in a three-dimensional setting being able to do isometrics in a multi-planar way uh is that's the basis of run training and of course incorporating breathing I, I, I always whenever i talk about training i always talk about breathing because that's not something that necessarily a lot of trainers talk about but it's the one process in our body that connects both your autonomic and your somatic nervous systems it's the one thing that helps to really really keep you alive you can do it voluntarily you can do it in your sleep but it's not something that a lot of people train so using your breath intelligently with that 3d movement helps you to deepen that mind muscle connection helps you to deepen that muscle control that i was talking about helps you to apply your strength more uh more accurately and it helps you for people who you know the the, the gym is pretty much there to compensate what is mostly a sedentary lifestyle for a lot of people because we used to be outside and hunting and running and in the trees or in, you know but you know, for a lot of our days now, we even if we are able to dedicate a number of uh, hours to working out or working in the gym or whatever, then a lot of us, unless we're professional athletes, are spending our days typing or writing or even if we're standing, we you know you're standing one place and like for instance, I, I'm I'm a cook. I'm usually standing in one location and I'm cooking there and like I have to take the time to go and work out or have to take the time to go and run or walk. So that three dimensional strength sometimes is lost being mm -hmm. able to move that in space. Um, so incorporating that multi-planar mindset into that full body tension. Uh, and I keep saying full body tension. I, I, I speak often on the importance of the fascia. The fascia is, is, is just a, basically a ligament network that it works on a tensegrity structure. If you make a movement in your toe, your fascia transfers that tension throughout your body, throughout the structure, because that's how it's built. That's it's the same way that um, earthquake resistant buildings in California are structured in order to transfer the tension throughout the unit instead of just having that one solid you know building because that solid structure if the if the force overcomes the one side then the whole thing collapses yep. but if you're able to distribute the force mm -hmm. then you know that you can transfer it and that was that's a precept of martial arts it was a tre precept of uh the yi jin jing you know the blood and tendon changing classics in shaolin um being able to transmit that force throughout your body and that was an important aspect of training for me for isometrics because of how ligament heavy it is how tendon heavy it is um it is it's perfect for applying full body tension for learning to navigate that tensegrity and also learning to do that in all three planes of motion so that's what range training essentially is that is crazy dude and wow and i i definitely remember seeing that bent press um as a photo yeah. and as soon as you started describing i'm like oh i know what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> um yeah man it's 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 a, it's a mainly forgotten lift now but it used to be that that used to be the benchmark for old time strongmen of like the the reason that arthur saxon is hailed often as one of the greatest old time strongmen of all time is because 
he was able to he 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 could bent press more than anyone else. He could he I think he still holds the record for a bent press of 370 pounds. And you know you see you have people who are out who, who are doing like uh Eddie Hall's 500 kilogram deadlift and things like that. But like you would think that you see somebody being able to do a lift like that could nope. be able to press 370 pounds of the bench press but no because you're no. it's it's that movement through that 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 three-dimensional movement it, it's what makes the difference you know right being yeah. able to take that incredible level of strength but imply it in all planes it's just it's a it's, it's different. a different beast and 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 that reminds yeah. me of um it's it's like it's like saying and because I, I totally understand what you're saying and, and um for for someone that might not know, that's like saying, okay, um, so you guys are strong, so that means that you're automatically going to be a great rock climber. And it's like, mm -hmm, well, right. no. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this, <laughs> having, having that strength in this one discipline doesn't necessarily translate in the others. You know, that's so right. just because you're great at yoga doesn't mean that you're a great dancer because you have the flexibility, you know, but this it's, it's strength is an art strength is a skill you know it. each yeah. skill has because it's, it's there's different neurological adaptations you know there's a lot that goes with it so that's right but and like yeah there, I mean, the more that you can employ your maximum strength in all three planes of movement together the more that you can employ your strength as a unit then the more that you are able to get more benefits out of cross-discipline training you know, the right. more, the, that's that's what I would say. Like that's why you see uh, a lot of you, you'll see you'll see gymnasts who can come out of like gym training and then come out of training as a gymnast, and then like they'll take them to the weight room, and you'll see them like deadlifting three times body weight, having never picked up a weight or something like that. Yeah. It's not necessary necessarily that they're going to be better weightlifters than the other ones in the room because there's usually a cap. Uh, you get the beginner's games, but there's still the technique. There's still the, uh, that strength discipline, but it's the fact that they are able to move their bodies in three-dimensional space more efficiently and their strength is more well-rounded that that creates a better uh, scope for that cross-discipline training. That's It's the GPP, general physical preparedness versus SPP, so specific physical preparedness. You know? Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I guess one thing I wanted to, um, before we head out is, are there any other uh, pieces of information that you feel would be beneficial for um, anyone uh, just um, getting involved in isometrics for the first time? Um, for anyone getting involved in isometrics, what I would say is not to be over ambitious because with the isometric training because it doesn't feel necessarily the same like you don't necessarily get the same level of uh, delayed m onset muscle soreness from isometric training you may not necessarily already or you may be super excited about the strength gains that you're getting um don't be over ambitious don't be overzealous don't say that like oh if i do this maximal training workout today i can just wake up and do the same tomorrow and the next day and then that give yourself time to rest give just like any other training program just because isometrics has all of these incredible benefits you can still overtrain with isometrics like anything else you can you can just because it can prevent injuries and help to heal things that doesn't mean that it's 100 percent injury proof just don't try to you know bite off more than you can chew enjoy the process enjoy the benefits but you know be intelligent with your training you heard it there squad you heard it all right well thank you so much Jarrell. it has been a pleasure having you on the squad man it's like guys guys you'll understand he is like he is a, a celebrity guys like you'll understand so <laughs> so i really appreciate your time to tonight man what's yeah, that it's, uh, it's great to great to talk to you after all this time good to hear from you and uh good to be able to you know chop it up and you know share my information and 
hope that hope that the squad enjoys. Appreciate it so much, man.